I'm about to listen to a real call recording by a producer that's quoting somebody's home and auto insurance. I'm gonna give her some feedback, I'm gonna score the call, and I'm gonna be using the score my call sheet that you can find in the Insurance Sales Lab training platform. The score my call sheet is tied to the six step script to the one call close, which has helped hundreds and hundreds of agents, agencies, producers all across the country sell more premium. We're gonna listen to the call, we'll stop it here and there, we'll pause it and give feedback. Let's see how she does. Hello? Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Good. Good. Well, hey, I'm just reaching out to you here from New I know we had quoted you a while back, but we've had some rate change, and I wanted to reach out and see if we can get you an updated insurance quote. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so right off the bat, I really, really like how she started this call. The only feedback I would have here is just to end that hook with a question and roll right into the eligibility questions. Is this still the same address? Is this still your date of birth? Are these people still on the policy? Other than that, great start so far. Well, how have you been? Oh, good. It was good. It's been excessively hot, but uh, it's been fine. It has been hot, hasn't it? Oh my goodness. And what kind of vehicle is it that you're driving nowadays? We still have the same big two vehicles, the Ford Expedition and Mercedes. What year is that Mercedes? It's the 2017. And you said it's a, the E300? Yes, E300, yes. Perfect. And what year is that Expedition? Because I didn't see I had that one on here. Oh yeah, uh, it's a 2019. 2019, awesome. Well, who are you insured with now? Right now we have. What's charging you every single month? Two thirty-five. Two thirty-five. Well, okay. One thing I do notice is she had a small gap of dead air. It was right over five seconds. Outside of that, she's doing a great job filling those dead spots with questions, which is exactly what you want to do. Love how she asked, who are you currently covered with? How much are they charging you every month? He told her the price and she said, wow, okay. And then rolls into discounts. The only thing I would change here, especially if it's an, an older lead, is saying, okay, wow, that's interesting. They're charging that much. Did that recently go up? And regardless of what they say after, producer would respond with, okay, great. Well, I have a quote prepared for you here. Just wanna make sure that we're getting as many discounts applied as possible. Then she rolls right into the discount question. But so far, so good. We're on a good track here. Owner, or written your own. Own. Own, perfect. We have a discount just for owning as well, so that's, that's amazing. And full coverage on both the vehicles? Yes. Perfect. And is it still just you and Sarah as the drivers, or is there anybody else? I love the questions, honestly. Full coverage on both vehicles. I mean, that, that one could be a little more specific and wait until you finish up talking about the home, but love how she said, is it still you and Sarah on the policy? If we go back just a couple seconds when she asked if he owns or rent the home and he said owns, okay, perfect. Do you have your homeowner's insurance bundled with your auto insurance with the same company? And then you can start asking about the auto, but this is sounding good so far. This thing is looking good so far. Do you guys prefer the five $500 deductible or $1,000? Oh, that one was a different again. Uh, this is 1000 1000 Okay. Yeah. How long have you guys owned the 20 20- One thing about when she's asking for the deductibles, she said, do you prefer a 500 or a $1,000 deductible? And in that exact moment, you could tell the prospect doesn't really know what the deductibles mean or what the difference is between 500 or 1,000. What she could do here is asking, hey, do you know what deductibles you have on your current policy? Are they 500 or are they 1,000? And he went with 1,000, so it may be what he has. But after he responded with 1,000, okay, Perfect. Do you know the difference between comprehensive and collision coverage? By doing that, you're educating the client, which builds trust with them. You sound like an expert. You just have more ammo on the back end of the call. I like how she's asking for their coverages. It could just be improved a little bit more. Mercedes now. 2020, 2021, yeah. 2021, okay. What about that expedition as well? That was last year that we got that one. Okay, perfect. Well, do you know what all you have currently on your policy? I couldn't tell you on top of my head. I know that I have that document on my computer. I thought a few months ago, probably two months ago, but I, I, still, I told her for that. I just, I just erased it out of my mind. I got so much thing to think about. I'm sorry. Hey, no big deal at all. Totally okay. Only thing that I would add is if 
he's looking for his declarations page or doesn't know what he's covered for. In most cases, you can see the basics from a producer's end. You can see if they have comprehensive collision, you can see their liability limits, their property damage. And in most cases, you can even see if they have rental coverage or towing and labor. So if he's struggling to remember what he's covered for, or if he's trying to find the deck page, you can let him find it. But I would just add, hey, no worries. I can actually see some of what you're covered for now. It looks like you do have comprehensive and collision coverage on both vehicles. Is that right? And you can roll into it that way, but let's see how it goes. So we're definitely gonna make sure we still have full coverage on both the vehicles, the thousand dollar comprehensive and collision. I do see here though, that with you guys are only covered for up to $50,000 for one person's medical bill and $100,000 for everybody all together. Do you know what those numbers mean? I think I do the one where if you get into an accident, the bills are only covered up to 50000 for the person that hit. Yeah. All right, I'm excited to hear how she explains it on her end and if she does, but love the questions so far. And now she's talking about the coverages that she can see on her end. Like I said, the only thing that I would add is let him know how you can see those coverages. And then also, if you're gonna explain the liability limits, you might as well explain comprehensive and collision coverage. It's gonna be two points of the call where you're educating the client and they feel like they can trust you more. You know what you're talking about, but yeah, love that question. Let's see how she moves forward. I'm glad that somebody has explained it to you before and then the 100,000 is for everybody all together, no matter how many people, okay? okay? Yeah. And then currently with you guys are actually only covered for 25,000 for each. All right, so she's going into the property damage coverage now. Only feedback I have here is still paint a picture of what those liability limits mean. Just because he has the general idea, he might not have that definition sunk into his mind and, and know what it means. So let's see how she navigates the rest of this. 25,000 nowadays for a vehicle, man, those are hard to find, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this. Even the two nice vehicles that you have, I bet you, you know, probably didn't even pay 25000 for those. You probably just paid quite a bit more, right? <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> So I love how she's asking for feedback from the prospect. She's painting pictures of why that property damage should be higher and why $25,000 can sound like a lot, but it's really not a lot. So let's see how she does moving forward. I see right now that you do not carry roadside coverage or rental car. Is that something that you guys might need? Two drivers, two vehicles, if one of the vehicles is in the shop, would you guys need a rental car to be able to drive? Yeah, I said no earlier, but yeah. Uh... So let's definitely make sure we're getting that roadside coverage and the rental vehicle, okay? So you guys will actually get up to $50 a day for up to 30 days if the vehicle is ever damaged and how's they going to the shop to get repaired, okay? So then that way you guys aren't left on foot or having to share a vehicle or anything like that because I know from experience that can definitely be a pain, okay? True. Another thing that you guys are automatically going to get as well is the roadside coverage here with us. It covers for, you know, if you ever ran out of gas, uh, lost your car, uh, towing, anything like that. And from experience as well, this is a great thing to have on your policy. The reason for that is, is my car is actually messed up. It, my keys will automatically lock on the inside no matter how new it is. I had to have somebody come unlock my car. You know, out of pocket, it was $112 to have somebody come all the way out and unlock it. But... I submitted my receipt to the insurance. I ended up only having, it was taken care of. I didn't have to pay anything at all, okay? Uh, okay. So definitely a good thing as well. Is that picture right there that she painted she used a, a personal story about how her keys got locked in her car but i love how she's explaining it if she uses that same concept and that same motivation to explain comprehensive and collision and bodily injury coverage then now we've talked about roadside rental bodily injury comp and collision and the prospect is feeling like wow i didn't know that my policy didn't cover those things yeah so far so good to make sure you guys are still properly covered for you and sarah anytime you're out on the road because let's be real medical bills nowadays a vehicle anything like that is so expensive okay we're actually going to make sure you guys are double covered for okay. not double the price so that's the good news the two pieces of feedback that i have here first one i would try to avoid saying we're going to double your coverage and not double your price those words are kind of like red words or fire words it's going to flare the prospect up where they're like you're going to double my coverage but isn't that going to cost more so that's one piece here's the second piece i'll tie it into both is that this is the perfect place to tie in your why statement which is part of the score my call sheet there you can say hey a big reason people like to work with us is because we're going to cover you for 
this much. That way you don't have to worry about this, this, and that, and you're not in a place where you're financially burdened. I would explain the coverage when you're talking about it. I wouldn't go back and forth. And then also plug in that why statement to let them know why you're insuring them for more. Now she's about to explain the property damage and how they're gonna raise it. So let's see how she does. It's actually gonna be all the way up to 500,000 instead of just 25,000. So, you know, semis and, you know, tractors and all the different things we see out on the roads nowadays, they're better so expensive. Heaven by chance, you know, you guys hit something yeah. else, you know, it's, it's gonna be covered. You guys don't have to worry about, you know, garnish paychecks, you know, having to pay anything out of pocket to somebody else or out of a bank account, anything like that, okay? Right. Perfect. Right off the bat, if I'm thinking from a prospect standpoint or a customer standpoint, to go from 25,000 to 500,000 in property damage, that's a pretty big jump. Maybe explain why you're going that high. She mentioned semi trucks and other things like that, but really paint a picture of why you're going that high and whatever you're raising, we need a, a story to justify the difference in coverage. Let's see how she does moving forward. With all the additional coverages, still covering you for uninsured motorists as well, I want to stop and take a second though. Has anybody ever explained to you how uninsured motorist pays out in the instance that it has to? I love how she stopped the conversation. I want to take a second and ask you about this. From the customer standpoint, that means, hey, this is about to be important. The only feedback I have here is I would avoid saying these type of words, double the coverage, additional coverages. Tell the, the prospect what the coverage is and keep it moving and explain it thoroughly. So uh, please refresh my memory. Of course, of course, I don't mind at all. Uh, so uninsured motorist actually pays out for medical bills or missed uh -huh. time from work for you and Sarah if you guys are completely not at fault. I love how she's bringing his wife into the explanation here. It's going to pay for medical bills or time off of work for you and Sarah. You know, this is like sales 101 almost where once you get the spouse's name or the kid's name, if you use those in the conversation, it's gonna build rapport without you know, having to ask them how their day was or what they ate for lunch yesterday. Treating them like you already know them. We're friends, I'm here to help you. Let's get this taken care of. So, love that. If you guys are even 1% at fault, uninsured motorists will not pay out, okay? You guys okay. have to make sure you're fully not at fault if that was ever to have to be paid out, okay? Okay. But uh, I wanna make sure, does that make sense? Um, I know you guys have had it on there for a long time. Just want to make sure you still want to keep that on there because it is an additional $166 every six months on this policy. So are you saying we have that currently or we do not have that? You do currently have it, yes, sir. So the prospect, he's saying, that isn't something that we necessarily need, right? And the only reason he's saying that is because of the way she brought it up. So I know you guys have had it for a while and I want to make sure you still want it because it's costing you this much every six months, which you're kind of asking for the prospect to take that coverage off. Why even bring that up? Just tell them it's great coverage. You've had it for a while we'll keep that the same. Because you don't want to give them worse coverage than what they came with. That defeats the purpose. We want to give them better coverage at a better rate. Even if it's not a better rate, we have better coverage, which justifies the higher rate. Let's keep moving forward. Do you guys currently pay your insurance through the app or does it just auto draft out of your bank account? How do you guys pay it? Through the app and auto draft, yes. Okay, perfect. Do you guys prefer to do paperless billing where you guys have it um, sent to like your email and stuff or do you guys prefer it in the mail? No, 100% yeah. Perfect, okay. And on your home, you guys have that bundle with well? All right, so really quick, the question she just asked about, do you pay through the app or do you have it auto-drafted? Do you want paperless billing or do you want it mailed? I'm almost positive, 99% sure that those are discount questions. So I would just explain why you're asking those questions, especially if it's a discount, because that adds to the conversation. And then also, I wouldn't bring this up in the middle of the call. I would bring it up at the end after you've collected payment info. That way it's just related to what you're talking about because we go from auto coverage to auto draft and paperless billing to homeowners coverage. It just it doesn't fit there. Let's just put it on the end. Let's see how she does moving forward. Where do you guys have that insured at right now? It's okay. Well, what are they charging you guys for your home? I know this has really gone up this year. Well, I think 17, no, 18. Okay. When was that home built? What year? 
I see here 2012. Does that sound about right as well? I know you're pretty close to it. Okay, that's great. That's great. It's still a pretty new home, so it's good. Is it the original roof, or did, have you guys had it? Okay, so she's going into confirming the eligibility on the home. The only thing that I would tweak here is that when you're asking, hey, do you have your homeowner's policy bundled with the same company? And he says no. I would just add, okay, so just so you know, one of the biggest discounts we offer is if you bundle both your home and your auto. So really quick, just to make sure it looks like the home was built in this year. And then just roll right into those questions. Let's see how she does moving forward. Yes, it was replaced right before we bought it. Was that here the last few years or what year was that? 2020. 2020, okay. So let me take a look here and see what we can do, okay? Okay. How are you guys enjoying that house through COVID and everything? So we're going back into questions about the house, which is great. But instead of saying, all right, let's see what we can do here. I would just go into explaining your homeowner's policy. The prospect doesn't know what you're doing. They don't know if you're reading a script. They don't know if you're on the computer messing with discounts or looking up their home on Google. They don't really know. If you have your presentation mapped out, if you're really, really familiar with your script, then you can explain all of the coverages and be building the quote at the same time. She didn't ask if he wanted to bundle it. And I guess that's what that little phrase was. Let's see what we can do here. She was assuming the bundle, but I, I do like that. And it looks like. And then I do have the personal property amount at 180,000 as well. This is everything for you and Sarah, and also for you and your family. If you guys are ever put out of your home for whatever reason at all, for up to two years, it actually is going to be covered all the way up to 120,000. Okay. Okay. I want to take a quick second. Do you have any questions at all, or does all that make sense so far? That makes everything makes sense so far. Okay. So before she explains the price, it sounded like she was just going down the deck page, coverage A, coverage B, coverage C, coverage D. I would throw some stories in here, paint a picture on the coverage, explain why it's important to cover the plumbing and our electrical. A story needs to be painted for the prospect to understand why those are important to have. So let's hear how she presents the price. So what I am looking at for the auto policy for both of the vehicles, that is just $314 every month and the home for the entire year is $5,053 for the year, okay? How do you guys typically do you use card or just bank account to um, pay your insurance? Car insurance on cars. I think I linked my bank account to that thing. I think I did. And then, of course, the home insurance uh, gets sent to the uh, mortgage people that need to take care of that. Okay, now, perfect. Do one thing for me. Give me a higher deductible. Just off his last question there, can you give me a higher deductible? That means the price may be a little high especially when presenting the price here, present the price and then ask for the sale right after. No pause, no break, no questions. Here's the price, tell them how to get started and split those prices up. Because now he's thinking about a bunch of different things. Collect the card for the auto and then right after that, who do you bank with there? Perfect. And then I need the loan number. Do you have your declarations page? Do you have a loan number? And you just isolate them one at a time and kind of hold their hand and walk them to the sale. His objection was, let me see one thing. Can we raise the deductibles to see what the quote would be? Let's see how she handles that. On the roof, okay. Are you thinking like a 2% deductible? To make it to where, um, I'm saying, if something happens to the roof, I don't want my insurance to pay, I'll pay out of pocket. Okay, so you want the highest possible deductible on the roof? Yes. If the prospect is literally asking you for the highest deductible possible, maybe you can cave in there, but I would push back just a little more because a lot of times on the initial call, if she ends up closing this person and then two years down the road, he makes a claim and forgets that he got the highest deductible and then he gets super upset because we let him take the highest deductible. So I would just push back a little bit on that. Also explain to him really well, hey, I just want to make sure you want the highest deductible possible. Yeah, I do. Okay. And that's going to be $10,000 if something happens to your roof. Is that what you're comfortable with? Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. All right, cool. We can do that. So now it looks like he's about to ask about the auto. Let's see how she handles it. And the good news about these policies together, if you do bundle them with us, you actually have what is called a one deductible occurrence. So heaven forbid there's like a major hell storm that does come through and you end up do having to replace that roof because, you know, back in 2021, there was a pretty serious one that came through like the more Norman-ish area. Today, something like that did happen and you did end up having to get it replaced and say your vehicle's got damage as well. 
the good news about that is, is you would just have to pay your one deductible, which would just be your home, and you would actually get your vehicles fixed as well. You wouldn't have to pay the deductible for them. Okay. She's talking about the hail storms, people's roofs being replaced. This is stuff to bring up when they're asking for higher deductibles. And then you might be more inclined to go with the lower deductible, which raises the premium on the policy, helps the client and the agent because you get all the premium. Then two years down the road, if they make a claim, they're not upset. I would just take that story that she just told, throw it behind that question of can we raise the deductibles? And we probably wouldn't have to worry about it moving forward. Let's see how the rest of this call goes. You would only have to pay your home deductible and that would cover to fix your roof on your home or any sort of damage to your home and your vehicle. Okay. And well, hey, I'm I'm happy that we're having this conversation. You know, all it takes to get this started for you is just either your Visa card or we can use your bank account, whichever one you want to use. Okay, can you email that over so I can I review that at least with my wife? All right, I want to see how she handles this objection of email it to me, but asking for the sale. It was way too fast. It was not explained thoroughly in the script. In terms of getting started, it's really easy. We can actually help you switch from your current carrier to us. All we need to get started is whatever card you wanna to use to process the first one's payment. Visa or MasterCard. You collect it for the auto and then for the home, you mentioned you have a three-year mortgage. All I need there is just whatever bank you have the loan through and we can work with them and make sure that all gets switched over. So you wanna relieve a lot of the stress of switching. Explaining it in that way really helps with that. So it was too quick. She said Visa or bank account. He said, can you email me the quote? I wanna to talk to my wife about it, which is really two objections in one. Let's see how she handles it. Yeah, of course. So let me take a quick look here. Let me get this sent over to you, okay? Okay. Well, if you don't mind, do you have access to that email right now while we're on the phone? I do, yes. Great job. There's a great thing and a really, really big missed opportunity. So, and I thought she was going to do it the way she asked. She said, hey, I'm going to send the quote over to you right now. What's the, the best email? The only thing I would change there, which is uh, really small, is whatever email you do have for them, just confirm that if you have it. But send them the quote. And she said, okay, do you have access to that email right now? He's like, yeah. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure that you do get that email. Email, that way you can talk it over with her. This right here is a really, really key moment in handling this objection. Have them pull up the quote with you on the phone. The easiest way to do that, which she already covered the first half, hey, do you have access to that email right now? I just wanna make sure you get it. Yeah, I do have access. Perfect. Go ahead and pull that quote up for me so I can make sure it works on your end. And I also just wanna point out a couple things that you can go over with your wife. That way you guys can make an educated decision. So let me know when you see that email. That's what she has to do. Have him sell himself and then ask for the business again. So she's doing great. Let's see how she does at the end of this call. Let me know whenever you receive that. And then um, also I want to just make sure uh, that you do know, you know, on the home, of course, it doesn't cover flood insurance, doesn't cover earthquake. Those are separate types of policies. The other thing that it does not cover is uh, if something happens to you is there i know you said it's paid through the mortgage would your wife be able to pay the the mortgage all by herself or do you have some sort of life insurance outside of work that covers that mm, i love the way that she brought up life insurance i don't like the three things that were stated right before that because it sounds like she starts talking about what it doesn't cover like it doesn't cover earthquake it doesn't cover flood you have to get those separately. Yeah, I, I would just scratch all those questions. I love the transition, it's it's unique, but I would just scratch the questions before that about what's not covered. Let's see how this life combo goes. We had a really strong plan that was put in place by me to know what to do, so I hope she can follow that. <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, you're, you're trying to take care of her for sure. What's the plan? And this is where you can be personable with the prospect, right? She's like, hey, do you have life insurance for your wife? I have a really strong plan that if she follows, she'll be good. Okay, interesting. That's awesome that you do that. What's the plan? And then you can kind of let them explain it and you can pick holes in that plan. Let them know why life insurance is important. Let's see how she does. What about her? She has her life insurance somewhere as well? I think so. I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, that's yeah. me. Uh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Okay. I just have to. Okay. I just have to click view. Okay. Perfect. All right. Yes, sir. Oh man, he has the quote pulled up. He's looking at the quote on his own. You can hear that on your end. So just say, hey, really quick, pull up the quote. 
I want to run through a couple of things. That way, you and your wife can make an educated decision. Man, you're so close. Sounds like she's wrapping up the call. Let's just double check and, and make sure. Do you have any other questions in the meantime before we hop off the phone? Oh, no. Uh, it was really helpful. Thank you so much for explaining every time and again. I know it's been a few days, a few months, but you know, it was good to like refresh my memory and know, Absolutely. you know, what all I'm missing as well. She's been beneficial for me, so I really appreciate that. I've definitely reviewed it. And like I said, on photo insurance sounds really good. I'll see if I can work something out for you, uh, which you got it, but um, I'll keep you updated. Okay, that sounds great. How about I follow up to you maybe tomorrow afternoon? Does that work for you? That works for me. I'm around the same time. It's perfect. Perfect. Well, I will make sure that that gets done for you, okay? I'll talk to you then. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You're welcome. All right, so obviously we want the one call close. She didn't get it on this one, which is okay because she set up a follow-up appointment for the next day, which is what we wanna do. We don't wanna push it out till next week or in a couple weeks or even a couple days. We want it tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, she was right there. Let's score the call and I'll be able to provide a little bit more feedback. Step number one, the hook. She didn't get him to say yes three times. She did a good job confirming information, but there wasn't that yes mark three times. So no point there. Step two, building value versus selling on price for the homeowners. I'll give her half a point there because I didn't hear any strong differences on the home. Reviewed eligibility questions and home replacement cost estimator. I think she did. Step three, multi-lining auto. Discuss two or three similarities and two or three differences. Yes, she did. I think she could have done a much better job discussing them, but she did bring up similarities and differences. Positive response to your stories. Wow, that's great that you guys do that. Yeah, I think she did when she was explaining roadside and, and rentals. Gave our why statement, she did not. And there was a few times, a handful of times throughout the call where she could have weaved it in there and it would have made her explanations much more powerful. Missed opportunity there. Cost presentation, ran through uh, all quoting platforms before sharing the price. Not sure how many platforms she has access to. We'll give her the point, we'll give her the point. She said, let's see what we can do here a couple times, let's see. Didn't pause after price reveal but went straight into asking for the sale. No, she didn't do that. No check there. Asking for the sale, asked for payment information, Visa or MasterCard. Ah, she said Visa or bank account. I'm sorry, but that doesn't count, no point. Overcame closing objection by reviewing the quote I emailed and asked for the sale again. She was right there. She was so close to reviewing the quote over email and she really didn't even try to overcome the objections. There was two objections given, email me the quote, I wanna to talk to my spouse. She did email the quote, but that's not overcoming the objection. And she didn't mention anything about him talking to it with a spouse, so no point there. Other key performance indicators, ask for a referral. Nope, no dead air. There wasn't any really long, outrageous pauses. And I could tell she was trying to fill the dead air with questions, so we'll give her that. Upbeat tone throughout the entire call, yes. She did a great job there. Discussed life insurance, yes. I'm proud of her for doing that. Asked two open-ended questions not related to insurance. Yes, she did that. So 8.5 out of 15. This producer is really on the right track. I mean, if she just cleans up a few things that we discussed when it comes to explaining the coverages, weaving in that why statement, asking for the sale in a, a better way, comparing the two prices, I think she crushes it. This was really good. Room for improvement. Let's see what she does in the future. Hey, if you want the sheet that we use to score that call, then you can click the link below this video. You'll get access to the sheet. You can download it for free and you can keep it on your desk while you're on a sales call. You go through each one of the points that we talked about and you can review your scores and learn how to get better. That score my call sheet is tied to the six step script to the one call close, which you can get inside the insurance sales lab training platform. If you wanna have stronger conversations, if you wanna close more business, you need to get trained. Sales is just like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get. So inside Insurance Sales Lab, we have an entire masterclass that goes through building value versus selling on price for the auto, building value on the home, overcoming closing objections and opening objections, how to sell life insurance, commercial insurance, business management training, everything you need to run a high producing, profitable agency. So if you want access and that's you who wants to train and get better and change the direction of your agency, go to insurancesaleslab.com and become a member today.